Hi, this is Matt again. I wanted to discuss today with you um, the second part of the Lancet series of uh, low back pain, which is entitled uh, Prevention and Treatment of Low Back Pain. Uh, what we're now looking at are essentially two categories. This paper was put out in originally 2018 by Nadine Foster and colleagues. Uh, it's since been updated. Uh, it's largely the same, as have all guidelines been pretty similar for a long period of time. Perhaps there's been a shift in recent years away from uh, essentially pharmacological management to more non-pharmacological management. That's the, the main emphasis. And there are really a couple of different categories of back pain. So uh, we have acute back pain, which is less than six weeks. So that's a sudden onset. Um, it may or may not be uh, recognizable as to what the cause of it was. Um, and again, that would be, you know, up to about that six week mark, and certain treatments are suggested for that. That's what we'll primarily be discussing in today's uh, video. The second line of uh, back pain is, is chronic back pain, and that's going to be a little bit different because of some changes that occur um, in, in the nature of the condition, and in particular in the nature of uh, our nervous systems when that happens. So. Um, with acute back pain, one of the primary focuses is to prevent yourself from becoming a chronic pain patient. Um, once you're in that category, it becomes much more complicated to uh, manage the condition. And there are some things you can do early on that we just know work for large population-based studies. This means um, if you take you know, 100 patients, 90% of the patients uh, will fall into this category, and then a smaller percentage will... Um, and not necessarily respond to, uh, to those suggestions. So first and foremost, with an acute episode of low back pain, one of the suggestions is really self-management. Reassurance, uh, you may need to see a healthcare practitioner to have them rule out that it's nothing serious. 90% um, of the time, back pain is really innocuous. It may be very painful. Uh, you may not know what's going on. Uh, seeing a healthcare practitioner should provide you with some reassurance, but if you can try to self-manage, think of it like a sprain as though it were a sprained ankle. Um, another way to think of it is it's exceedingly common. Uh, it's a common, sort of like having a cold is common. Uh, and oftentimes having a cold, you'll get better. Uh, the same thing with low back pain, you'll oftentimes get, get better in a, in a period of time. Um, there are some things you can do to self-manage. Heat packs are great. Uh, in particular, they provide a sense of security, they can decrease muscle spasm, uh, help with uh, pain. There are a lot of benefits to using heat pack therapy. In particular, it's low cost, it's safe, and um, yeah, it's unlikely to lead you to chronicity. So um, now there are many other things that uh, you can do to, to manage it proactively. A little bit of movement is good. So this is where, again, seeing a healthcare practitioner can be beneficial. Um, you want to have a couple of movement strategies, sort of like when you're eating. You have a, a couple of varieties of food that you can choose from uh, that are going to be healthy for you. You want to have the same with um, your movement strategies, thinking of it like, okay, well, if you can't do this one for this time being, maybe you have a variety of others that you can choose from. Some you'll like and some you won't, uh, but you want to go with essentially those that don't give you sharp sensation and give your brain a, a sense of uh, reassurance that it's going to be safe to move. Oftentimes the pain associated with it can really be turned up or turned down based on the information that we're giving it. So we want to give your brain in an acute setting that safe messaging that, ah, oh, this is just my back being protective, uh, but there's no real uh, threat here. Um, it, we can also think of it like a car alarm where uh, the alarm will go off, say there is, um, you know, a or an incident uh, for your back it might be picking something up that's overly heavy when you haven't been conditioned to do so for a long period of time. And you might not be sleeping well, you might be going through a stressful event, and that's just the incident that seems to set off your back at that point in time. Uh, now, um, essentially, that initial nociception, that pain signal going up to your brain, uh, that can be turned up if you're really worried, if you are really concerned. So um, the heat pack and a little bit of movement in positions that don't give you sharp sensation should calm your nervous system down. Um, now there are other treatments that we know that work. Um, for example, 
uh, spinal manipulation or what chiropractors call an adjustment that has some evidence for it, uh, some soft tissue treatment that has some evidence for it. There are also things like um, uh, dry needling, which is something that I use and that has some evidence for it. And different guidelines recommend um, different types of treatments. They're all probably equally effective. Some will be more effective for some people and less effective for others. Um, there are some other things that you can do, um, you know, in terms of, uh, I guess, having a, a plan in terms of how you're going to manage it going forward. Um, and there are definitely some, I guess, psychosocial things to consider here. Uh, and what I mean by that is, believe it or not, one of the best things you can do is if you're currently employed you, or you're currently in a significant routine, you stick to that routine. You keep going you know, to your, your workplace. Perhaps you need modified duties for a time period, but going to work with um, your, your back pain is associated with a much better outcome. And it also decrease the likelihood that this can become a, an episode of chronic pain. Now that may seem counterintuitive, but that is uh, our uh, very well understood uh, principle in the management of back pain. So um, yeah, we want you to um, take that into mind. There are also some things um, that you can take, you know, there are over-the-counter medications that you can get from a pharmacy. Many of these are um, you know, still part of guideline recommended treatment. Um, some are less so these days. Paracetamol in randomized controlled trials seems to be as effective as placebo, um, and there are associated risks with the uh, use of paracetamol, especially long-term or in higher doses. So you want to make sure you check with your healthcare practitioner about that. Uh, non steroidal anti-inflammatories, they seem to help perhaps one in 10 people, um, excuse me, one in six people, uh, and they decrease your pain about one out of 10. Uh, that's on, on average. Some people may respond more favorably, some less favorably. And there's some early evidence now suggesting that uh, use of anti-inflammatories may be associated with, uh, again, shifting your acute back pain episode into a more chronic condition. Now, that's an early study, but again, this is all consistent with guideline recommended treatment, which uh, suggests really a move away from uh, pharmacological treatments and more towards non-pharmacological treatments. Um, otherwise, um, there are definitely some things to avoid. Uh, strong evidence now suggests avoiding opioid analgesics. That's why in Australia they've been really removed from over-the-counter and you now require a prescription. The problem with those is that they increase the, the risk of dependency. So again, that may be something that is effective for some people, um, but in most randomized controlled trials, no more effective than nonsteroidal anti-inflammatories, much um, less, uh, yeah, there's just risk associated with it. So you want to speak to your general practitioner about that. Um, other things that we know are ineffective, gabapentin or Lyrica, um, even for uh, sciatica, there's now strong evidence that the risks associated with it are a bit greater than the benefits that one could gain. So again, not uh, true for every uh, individual, but uh, for the, the large uh, percentage of uh, the population, uh, it's not something that is a first-line treatment for your, your back pain. So um, with that in mind, um, I will mention Nadine Foster has updated this paper uh, in the last few years. And there is a big shift towards, believe it or not, mismanagement and um, non-guideline recommended treatment still. Uh, the rise of uh, cannabinoids uh, or the use of uh, over-the-counter cannabis for the treatment of um, back pain. Again, the, the evidence doesn't really support that it's all that effective. Now, I'm not saying that's not effective for um, every individual, but there are um, you know, other incentives that need to be considered as to whether or not this is going to be the best treatment for the general population. And to the best of our, um, our current available evidence, it doesn't seem to be. So um, keep that in mind. Um, and uh, as always, if you ever have any questions, you can always uh, ring up your local uh, healthcare practitioner, uh, see your GP, uh, your local chiropractor, or your local physio. 
uh, and they should be able to uh, give you some similar types of treatments. Uh, we'll last one or explain one last thing, and that's um, requesting imaging. Uh, believe it or not, for low back pain, it's probably best to avoid imaging uh, in the early stages, unless there is a risk of something quite serious, uh, which would be cancer, a condition called cauda equina syndrome, where there's loss of bowel or bladder function, uh, or uh, an infection. Um, but again, these should be screened by most competent healthcare practitioners pretty quickly. Um, and in the absence of trauma, for the most part, uh, low back pain, although it can be very, very uh, sore and uh, a little bit disabling, it doesn't require imaging because it doesn't really help your, your outcomes. And in fact, there's, there's fairly strong evidence that it may, again, shift you more towards that uh, chronic back pain population. So we want to avoid that as all, at all costs. Um, thanks, and I've been Matt. All the best.